sound. Something Star Citizen does really well. It's no surprise then that a lot of sound effects in Star Citizen give you the most immersive sensation possible, really drawing you into the spacesuit. The cockpit. Or the planet's atmosphere. One of the most recent Star Citizen Live episodes had us listen in to some of the audio team as they explained to us some of the ins and outs and decision making processes that take place when weighing up the balance between gameplay and immersion. Before we listen into this clip and talk about it, I want to put a little disclaimer out there related to the opportunity we have when Cloud Imperium Games discusses things so openly and freely, not afraid to communicate their current stance or thought processes. Nothing is ever set in stone with CIG, and it is our responsibility as we participate in this alpha to provide constructive feedback and express the things we like to see. So with that said, let's listen to the following segment and provide some food for thought in the shape of an experiment. Will we get sonic booms? <laughs> That's a slightly different question to what we've been asked in the past. I think um, people quite often ask the question about speed of sound, and we talk about why it's not something that, uh, mostly for gameplay reasons, for uh, player response times and things like that, we, we choose not to implement it, and it's really a gameplay decision. Um, but sonic booms specifically, I mean, there's no reason why we couldn't do that. We could, uh, we can allow sonic booms. We can play them at the correct sort of uh, speeds and dependent on atmospheric pressure and things like this. And you know, uh, yeah, we could absolutely implement that. But what we would probably not do with it is respect the speed of sound distance from the sonic boom to the the listening device. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why not? Uh, again, mostly because um, we need to make the same decision across the whole game so that everything knits together nicely. And for gameplay reasons, that decision is not to have speed of sound delays. Uh, I'm not ruling it out entirely. You know, it's, it's, it's not a, impossible to uh, to implement, but it, it is much more of a gameplay decision because it affects so many aspects of gameplay. Let's dissect what we just heard. Sound delay is possible. Sound delay is currently limited for gameplay reasons. CIG would consider sonic booms, and CIG would rather not consider sound delay based on the speed of sound through various atmospheric densities. The last two points are important, even without taking into account that sound travels slower if the atmospheric density is lower. As you know, sound cannot travel through a vacuum. Before we pop into Star Citizen, I wanted to mention the A-10 Warthog. The A-10 is infamous for its Gatling-style autocannon. It's said that if you hear the rounds impacting, you know the rounds weren't meant for you. That is because the sound of the rounds impacting will reach you before the sound of the gun firing. This is because the rounds travel faster than the speed of sound. Here's an example of how this sounds. Notice how the gun's burrt comes after the impact? It messes with the brain a bit, that's for sure. And that's also probably one of the reasons why CIG is careful with implementing stuff like this. Now then, let's head into Star Citizen and listen to some stuff. I want to draw you to two scenarios in game that show that they haven't yet fully decided what their approach is going to be. Because in some scenarios, they already apply sound delay while in others, they do not. Take this missile, being fired and observed from a distance. Did you notice how there was no sound delay? The effects are instant, which of course makes no sense from a realistic point of view. If this was real life, there would be an audible delay between observing the event and hearing it go off. Let's check out the more recently added Class 10 bomb fired from the Crusader Hercules. 
Here first, we'll observe the explosion from a close proximity. The sound is instant, and it's beautiful. There's pretty much no delay observed. Now let's do the same thing, but observe the explosion from a distance. Did you notice that? There is a significant observable delay between the so-called flash and thunder. And this is very cool and very promising. It shows us that they are looking at implementing sound delay based on distance at least. And I would argue that the fact that we see this only on the newly added bomb is the result of a more recent feature receiving this treatment while other features haven't. As mentioned, unfortunately this bomb is the only sound effect in game to feature this right now. So I've prepared a few clips that show not only the effect of sound delay on all things in game, but also went a step further and tried my best to increase the delay when it comes to atmospheres with a thinner density. Let's start with the Pisces parked on Earth-like Microtech. I've added a delay to the sound so that it is closer to what you'd experience if you observed this in real life. What did you think about this? Do you like this better than when the sound effects are instant? I sure do. It adds to that immersion I experience everywhere else in Star Citizen. Here are a few flybys. I took into consideration the speed of sound, and so as the ship approaches, there is quiet. Then there's that infamous sonic boom. This one might be a little hard to implement, what with the silence before the storm and all that, but I like it. I think that currently there is too much high frequency wind noise crackling through the sky as ships fly around, and I would love more sonic boom effects at the least. Let's head back to Clio now, where the atmospheric density is sitting around 30% of that of Earth. This means that sound effects will take longer to reach you. It would also sound lower pitched, but I've not done much to account for that. Here's a flyby, first of all. Notice how I added a bigger delay to account for the lower speed of sound? This is exactly what CIG doesn't want to implement, because it would confuse people because it's not intuitive if you aren't at least a little bit familiar with how the speed of sound works. And this is where I'd personally want to encourage CIG to dare. Take that step. Continue on that path of immersion you're on. We'll learn. We'll adapt. We'll love it. Personally speaking, of course. <laughs> Let's go back to that explosion we talked about earlier. Here's that missile first being fired, but with added sound delays. The ship is closer to us, so the sound delay is shorter. The explosion is further away, so the sound delay is greater. What did you think? Personally, I just can't get enough. It makes things feel much more realistic and immersive to me. Now let's go back to those bombs we dropped on Clio. But this time, on top of the sound delay that CIG already added, I accounted for the thinner atmosphere of Clio and increased the delay. Love it personally. My goal with this video is to get you thinking, to get CIG thinking, 
and to have them consider continuing onto that path of immersion. To have more realistic sound effects in terms of sound delays and things like that. We don't have to go quiet in a vacuum. We don't have to go that far. But I would love the ability to turn off, let's say, the artificial sound enhancers so that I can hear the muffled sound effects of gunfire from my ship. As always, food for thought. <laughs>